I just read 200 lines, first lines out loud. I just read 200 first lines out loud. Oh. Hi there, I'm Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. On this channel, we talk about books, uh, most of the ones that we're writing, but also reading and a little bit about journaling and how they can help us with our writing. So today I have done a big roundup. Um, I was going to go through all of my books, but turns out that I have a lot of them. So I went through 200 books that I own of different genres, historical fiction, YA, fantasy, contemporary, biography, and I wrote down their genre title and their first lines and put it in a big spreadsheet, which you can see below. And so we are going to try to learn what makes a good first line today by going through these 200 first lines. It's a weirdly subtle conversation. I gave that a four. Mrs. Rachel Lind lived just where the Avonlea main road dipped down into a little hollow, fringed with alders and ladies' eardrops, and traversed by a brook that had its source away back in the woods of the old Cuthbert place. 3. The blackboard was covered with chalky math problems. 2. Once there were four children, whose names were Peter, Susan, Edmund, and Lucy. 3. Walking back to camp through the swamp, Sam wondered whether to tell his father what he had seen. 4. When Mrs. Frederick C. Little's son, second son arrived, everybody noticed that he was not much bigger than a mouse. Four. Where is Papa going with that axe? Three. In a hole in the ground, there lived a hobbit. Five. All children, except one, grow up. Five. My father was the king and the son of kings. Three. Once upon a time, there were three happy girls, all born into charmed, sunshiny, shampoo commercial lives. Two. When I was little, the great mystery wasn't how babies were made, but why. Three. Leaving always came as a surprise, no matter how long the dates had been lo looming on the calendar. Three. In an email, would it kill you to get here before noon? Two. I have done many unwise things in my life. Two. So what do you reckon then? One. I can't believe this. Two. I can't believe I gave up my internship for this, moans Megan, staring glumly out the rain-streaked window. Three. Would you like fries with that? One. Nice skirt, Emma, Becca Chadwick called, giving me the once-over as I head down the aisle of the school bus, looking for a seat. Three. Now that I've found a way to fly, which direction should I go into the night? One. Dear Miss Delaney, What's this, I ask, picking up the letter that's lying in the middle of the plate and scooching my chair closer to the table? Two. Jess stares at me in disbelief. Two. My twin sister, Bay and I pass underneath the brown and turquoise banners hanging from the ceiling of the temple. Two. When he was nearly 13 years old, my brother Jem got his arm badly broken at the elbow. Four. In 1815, Charles Francois Bienvenu Muriel was Bishop of Dying. Two. When this story begins, Elizabeth Ann, who is the heroine of it, was a little girl of nine who lived with her great aunt Harriet in a medium sized city in a medium sized state in the middle of this country. Three. A man pushed a rock up the hill. Every morning, the sun comes up and turns the earth red, and I think this could be the day that everything changes. That's a four. That's from Reached. I'm standing in a river. Four. There can't really have been an elephant. Four. Would the defendant please rise? Three. For one whole year, we worried about Kate. Three. In the beginning, there is a formula. Three. The news that June's grandfather was being evicted had come from her older sister, Mary, who worked in town at Langham's drugstore. Three. Ruby had been marooned outside Mike Mitchell's office for going on 45 minutes, perched on a hard wooden chair under a wanly flickering electric light. Three. The hawk was back. Two. You've had bad days before, right? Two. Sophie had waited all her life to be kidnapped. Four. I stand in the doorway of the twins' room and watch them sleep, peaceful and innocent, through crib slates that remind me of bars on a prison cell. Three. Suppers at the royal court have become entirely too oppressive. Three. The name of the song is This Lullaby. Two. 
In the months following the accident, Ruthie and Julia imagined and discussed the last days of their parents' lives so often it was almost as if the girls had been there, accompanied them on the trip out west. Four. Well, this was a first. Two. The piece of paper could have been anything. Three. I may have found a solution to the wife problem. Five. They want me to write it down. Four. I didn't know about the dead girl until the first day of school. Four. The gate was packed with weary travelers, most of them standing and huddled along the walls because the meager allotment of plastic chairs had long since been taken. Two. Mom didn't think I should wear a skirt with jeans on my first day at my school. Three. What's amazing is how you can be a normal kid one day and then some something happens that completely changes your life. Two. Take your clothes off. Five. Mia, did you see the latest issue of The Atom? Three. Crime report from the Bloomville Herald. Four. Dear Carl Jung, I realize you will never read this letter, primarily because you are dead. I said it was a five because it's funny. Me, a princess in screenplay format? Four. Royal scandal. Prince Philippe of Genovia arrested. Three. <laughs> when people ask me what I do, the taxi driver is dental hygienist, I tell them I work in an office. Three. The hurricane was a thousand miles offshore when my ex-boyfriend called to offer me a ride to safety in his private jet. Five. Dear Santa, I want just one thing this year. A mom. Until his sister's death, Mark Nolan had treated his niece, Holly, with the usual offhand affection of a bachelor uncle. That's a four. I want every major moment of my life to occur at the Chateau Marmont. One. First, let me say that this will not be an easy tale to tell, so I'll warm up with an author's note. Three. That slowpoke Sarah. That's a one. It was half past midnight, and only one light was on in all the homes on Sycamore Drive. First chapter, that's a three. It was a dark and stormy night. That's a two. My New Year's resolutions by Princess Amelia Mignonette Romaldi Thermopolis Ronaldo, age 14 and eight months. Three. Okay, so I was just in the kitchen eating cereal, you know, the usual Monday morning routine, when my mom comes out of the bathroom with this funny look on her face. Three. Did you see it? That's a two. Today, when I walked into my princess lessons with Grandma after school, there was this totally creepy looking guy occupying the pink brocade settee where I normally sit because that's nearest the bowl of sugared almonds that I sneak whenever Grandma isn't looking, even though they aren't actually that good, like not candy or chocolate coated or anything, but beggars can't be choosers and why do old people have such sucky candy anyway? Five. <laughs> you are so lucky. One. Okay, here are the top 10 reasons why I can't stand my sister Lucy. 10. I get all her hand-me-downs, even her bras. That's a three. He hasn't called. Three. Sometimes it seems like all I ever do is lie. Four. Middle school has not been working out the way I hoped it would. Five. I like rules. Two. The best part about the holidays is showing off all the cool stuff you got to your friends. One. The Atlantic Ocean, Gibraltar, 1810. That was like the first label. Lady Victoria. Two. Okay, here are the top 10 reasons it sucks to be me, Samantha Madison. Two. Is that the one you're gonna wear? Two. So Lana's dad rented the Sultan of Brunei's $10 million yacht for the night and had Lana and her friends driven out to international waters so they could drink without getting in trouble. Four. Teen style chats with Princess Mia Thermopolis on what it means to be royal, her upcoming high school graduation, and prom, and her fashion must-haves. Three. Hi, Olivia. Is everything okay? Formatted as a text message. Two. I should probably start with a confession. In 1994, seated in the audience of the Imperial Theater on West 44th, 45th Street in Manhattan, I cried during the overture of Les Miserables. Five. I am told the first comprehensible word I uttered as a child was home. Four. My name is Charmian Carr. Four. If you'd asked me back at the beginning of my career to guess which character I was most likely to return to 15 years after I'd played her for the first time, there would have only been one answer. Two. I was brought up by an Airedale. Five. That's Christopher Plummer. Dear Halford, when we were together last, you gave me a very particular and interesting account of the most remarkable occurrence of your early life, previous to our acquaintance, and then you requested a return of confidence from me. Five. 
The water was still as we walked beside it. Three. I rolled over in bed, reaching for the warmth of my mother under the bearskin blanket. Two. We'd been living at our new place in Indianapolis only for a couple of days when I heard a knock at my front door. Two. Hey, Mads, first day of 10th grade down the tube. Woohoo! Uh, two. <laughs> Targets acquired, 10 o'clock. Four. Ours is essentially a tragic age, so we refuse to take it tragically. Five. Hello, parents of Miss Ward's kindergarten class. Email format. If you want to find Cherry Tree Lane, all you have to do is ask the policeman at the crossroads. Camden Falls, Massachusetts is more than 350 years old, but some of the people who live in the small town think that it, only now it is starting to show its age. Four. The Cherry Tree Lane one was a five. I don't know if I said that. I love the opening to Mary Poppins. Out of the gravel, there are peonies growing. Four. Juiced had two problems, the moon and his mustache. Four. Only the most jaded of critics would deny that the winter holiday concert had been an artistic triumph. And as far as Sophie could tell as the audience filed out of the auditorium to meet the young performers in cafeteria for juice and cookies, no one fitting that description had attended. Four. Dear girls, I have a secret that I never wanted anyone to know. Four. Straight people love to ask, when did you know you were gay? Three. The army crept like a dark stain across the horizon. Four. Sarah looked at the water stain on the wall and, and imagined it was a horizon. Two. Like a latter-day Greek temple, the Schuler family mansion sat atop a softly rounded hill outside Albany. I gave that a one. Our first morning in New York City before anyone else in the family had shown signs of life, I was up surveying the situation. Two. Have you ever seen a town fall? Ours did. And the chapter title is, It's Going to Be Someone's Fault. That's a five, that's Us Against You, which is one of my favorite books ever. Once upon a time, years and years ago, Pa stopped the horses and the wagon they were hauling away out on the prairie in Indian territory. Four. Forget Paris. Two. XTC was no good for drowning out the morons at the back of the bus. Four. To passerby, they must have looked like any other young couple enjoying the bright sun and cool breeze of a June day in New York City. Three. In my first memoir, entitled Home, I wrote about my youth growing up during World War II and my experiences performing in vaudeville from ages 10 to 18 and on Broadway in my early 20s. Later on, it had been eight years since I first made the leap across the Atlantic Ocean from England to Broadway. Two, because it's kind of exposition-y. Of all the people who knew about the big house in the middle of Wyndham Woods, very few had ever been inside. Two. Just be yourself, my mother said, as if that were easy. I gave that a two. We're moving. Three. Where am I? Four. Last November, I had a nightmare. Four. While I was still in Amsterdam, I dreamed about my mother for the first time in years. Four. Kelsey Glynn sat very still, watching the troop approach her homestead. Three. The afternoon my parents died, I was out shoplifting with Irene Clausen. Five. Two nights before Lammas Eve, I go to bed believing myself fat and happy. Four. At the height of the long wet summer of the 77th year of Sendovani, the thief maker of Camor paid a sudden and unannounced visit to the eyeless priest at the temple of Perlandero, desperately hoping to sell him the Lamora boy. Two. Quentin did a magic trick. Two. Bird, Mrs. Ross, all blonde hair and wide, coal-rimmed eyes, beckons from inside the probation office. Four. Marsh struggled to kill himself. Five. At dusk, they pour from the sky. Four. I, Frankie Lando Bakes, hereby confess that I was the sole mastermind behind the mal doings of the loyal order of the Basset Hounds. Five. Dawn came quickly on the Mort border. Two. Long before the Red Queen of Red Mort Mesna came to power, the glass fairt was already a lost cause. Two. The first person I met in England was a hallucination. Four. Once upon a time, there was a pair of pants. Four. When I was 12, I broke my leg jumping off the wall between Canada and Germany. I say, but the woman across, the, across from me doesn't even blink. Five. Once upon a time, there were four girls. Two. If you are reading this, you may know about us. Two. 
The letter came by courier last week. Two. Beyond the Indian hamlet, upon a forlorn strand, I haven't upon a trail of recent footprints. Two. That's from Cloud Atlas. That is a mind F of a book, eh? Moscow can be a cold, hard place in winter. Four. Because it will remain true, even then, that we will only see before effect after, only sense the immediate and dumbly feed on the invisible other. That's a four. I was filling out a magazine quiz to see if my marriage was stable. Four. Are you Fox, first name Graham? One. I glance around the auditorium, trying to take everything in without looking like I'm remotely interested. One. Carefully, I unclasped the locket from my neck. Two. I was born on the night of the salmine. Three. 20 more minutes, Hector, I say, and I'm free of this hell crater. Two. Late one evening, toward the end of March, a teenager picked up a double-barreled shotgun, walked into the forest, put the gun to someone's head, and pulled the trigger. Five. Frederick Backman is a god. Okay. Are you going to eat that? One. Orange juice was not scheduled for Fridays. Four. The light hadn't even officially turned green at the intersection of 17th and Broadway before an army of overconfident yellow cabs roared past the tiny death trap I was attempting to navigate around the city streets. Four. Megan, we need to talk. Two. When I was 25 years old, it came to my attention that I had never had a girlfriend. Five. Mortals are always going on about how important family is to them. Four. Boys weren't a problem for Jane. Three. She came to his room after darkness fell, confident that nobody had followed her. Four. My first thought is, my mother is dead. Four. The thing about birthdays, especially if you just that very day turned 13, is that you should know in your heart of hearts that the world is your oyster. Three. The day begins in the middle of the night. Five. I was born singing. Three. Flora Marie Northrop lay in her cozy bed in her cozy home in Camden Falls, Massachusetts, and reflected that there was nothing quite like a Saturday morning. Two. The year does not begin in January. Five. I clasp the flask between my hands, even though the warmth from the tea has long since reached into the frozen air. Two. I stared out at my shoes, watching as a fine layer of ash settles in the worn leather. leather. Two. So Jake, Graydon, and Allie Ryan are officially together. That's the preamble. And the next one is, Chloe's pregnant? That's three. I don't know how I ended up on the side of Hollister Road lying in this ditch. That's a five. Jason was going to brain camp. Three. Once upon a time in the magical land of Pine Glen, California, there lived a girl named Casey Peabody. That's me. Two, the thing about birthdays, at least 14th birthdays, is that they're more, well, complex than any, every single birthday that's come before. Three, I looked up because of the laughter and kept looking because of the girls. Three, dear Ginger, I have never been a great follower of rules. Three, it was that time of day again. Three, this year, the Green Pastures Emerging Talent Scholarship will be awarded to a student who shows promise in the field of fashion design. That's the preamble. I know I probably don't have to hand this diary in, but if anyone asks for it, I would like it to be wonderfully comprehensive. Four. The first time I met her was at the tail end of one of those endless weekday nights you could only have at a school like Sharingford. Two. No one knew for certain when the trouble started at Colgan School. Five. Abby Warner strolls around the ginkgo tree, one hand drifting lazily over the thick calluses. One. Scarlett Thompson has been my best friend for as long as I can remember. Two. There is one mirror in my house. Two. Get rid of that body now or my men will mutiny. Four. So I had sex again with Fletch last night. Five. So you want to go? Three. The dim wagon track went no further on the prairie, and Pa stopped the horses. Three. A long time ago, when all the grandmothers and grand grandfathers and grandmothers of today were little boys or girls or very small babies, or perhaps not even born, Pa and Mary and Laura and baby Carrie left their little house in the big woods of Wisconsin. Four. Once upon a time, 60 years ago, a little girl lived in the big woods of Wisconsin in a little gray house made of logs. Four. 
among other public buildings in a certain town, which for many reasons it will be prudent to refrain from mentioning, and to which I will assign no fictitious name, there is one anciently common to most towns, great or small, to wit, a workhouse. That's Oliver Twist. I said a three. Emma Woodhouse, handsome, clever, and rich, with a comfortable home and happy disposition, seemed to unite some of the best blessings of existence, and had lived nearly 21 years in the world with very little to distress her. That's a four. Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. Five. There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. Three. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Five. The family of Dashwood had long since been in Sussex. Three. Late in the afternoon of a chilly day in February, two gentlemen were sitting alone over their wine in a well-furnished dinghy parlor, dinghy parlor, in the town of P in Kentucky. One. It's a funny thing about mothers and fathers. Four. Once on a dark winter's day, when the yellow fog hung so thick and heavy in the streets of London that the lamps were lighted and the shop windows blazed with gas, as they do at night, an odd-looking little girl sat in a cab with her father and was driven rather slowly through the big through fairs. Four. It was Kate who, long after she was grown up, completed the story of the borrowers. One. It had once been a grand house, but not now. Two. It was the night before Christmas. Not actually from it was the night before Christmas. Two. So are you dreaming of a white Christmas? One. The oddest thing about Angelina D'Angelo was that no one could remember a time she didn't live in Willow Falls. Three. The school of dancing was in North London. Two. When we got the letter in the mail, my mother was ecstatic. Three. I spend a lot of time looking up. Three. And that's it. I just read 200 lines first lines out loud. I just read 200 first lines out loud. Oh my god, that took forever. I'm gonna go get some water and then I'm gonna be back and talk about some themes. <laughs> so after completing my analysis of 200 first lines, I have some lessons for you. I think that what makes a really good first line, obviously you have to interest, make the audience interested. So I'm gonna talk about what makes me interested. Um, if you look at the word cloud, that's the thumbnail for this video, you'll see that there aren't a lot of like fancy words or crazy adjectives or anything used. They're all pretty common words, but generally they're all pointing out something that's out of the ordinary. It was the first time this happened. It, when, we, when I first saw her, when I first met her, when we first went to X. They're very definitive. Um, it was the night before Christmas. The school of dancing in, is in North London. I was born X. My name is Charmian Carr. Like, they're definitive, um, and that's intriguing. Oh, Moscow can be a cold, hard place in winter. Very definitive. They can also give a really good idea of tone or character. When something's funny, the, the book's funny, the first line should be kind of funny. Um, the Princess Diaries one, that was super long. That was super funny. I loved that. The really good ones also will sometimes give you a hint about the character you know, their tone, the way they talk, what you're in for in the book. But I think the, the best way to write a first line is to think of that first scene or think of the novel or whatever and think of how it takes a common thing and twists it, basically. So someone's looking out their window, but it's their first time ever in New York City. They're talking about Paris, but they're saying, forget about Paris. And normally people are like, Paris is wonderful. Be yourself, as if that were easy. So very simple, like everyday things, just with that sort of twist. Okay, so that was a rundown of 200 first lines. Hopefully it either inspired you to look up some of the books. All the first lines are in the Google document that's linked down below with the names of the books and the genre. Feel free to copy it and do your own data analysis, whatever you want to do. Um, hopefully you find it happy. How do you figure out how to write your first lines? Do you have a favorite first line? If you do, comment your favorite first down line down below. Thanks very much. Please remember to subscribe and comment and let me know that you're here so we can continue our wonderful conversation. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. See you next time.